Hey, it's Jannie with Wild at Heart. Spoiler alert, this cat is not aggressive. She was just put under extreme stress and was defending herself. Truffle is a female Siamese cat who was nine months old when I first started working with her. She was taken in as a stray and kept in a very small cage at another shelter. She was extremely frightened and this video is actually her at that shelter. I didn't receive any behavior or background information, so I had to start from scratch. So how did I get from this? To this in about three months. These are the five major steps that I took in order to gain Truffle's trust and allow her to feel safe. These steps can be universal. Step one is space equals safe. I gave her a lot of space in order to allow her to feel safe. She was in a large room with tons of hiding places. And then for about a week, I really kept my distance. The first few days, I would just go in and feed her and make sure she had everything she needed. After several days, I would go in and sit in her room quietly and just let her know I was there. Truffle absolutely needed to feel safe in her space before I even started working with her. If a cat doesn't feel safe where they are, they're not going to trust anybody that comes into that area. And I knew she didn't feel safe because every time I walked into the room, she would hiss incessantly, lunge, swat through her hiding place, and spit at me. Step two is pairing, which shows that you're caring. When you pair yourself with something really positive, you begin to get the cat to associate you with that positive thing. So every time I walked into the room, I brought her wet food. I never invaded her space. I would simply slide the bowl across the floor towards where she was hiding. I would sit there for about 20 to 30 minutes and allow her time to eat. In the beginning, she wouldn't eat in front of me and that was okay. I would give her the food, sit quietly and then leave. She would always eat the food after I left. Even though she wasn't eating in my presence, I was still pairing myself with something positive. She absolutely knew that I was the one who brought her the food. After a couple weeks, she eventually started poking her head out to eat in front of me. I still kept my distance at least six feet away and sat sideways to her and never stared at her. She started recognizing the noise of the bowl sliding on the floor and that began to be her cue to come out and eat. Every time I walked through that door, I brought her a little bit of food to pair myself with. Step three is play makes cats feel okay. It's nearly impossible for a cat to feel frightened and play at the same time. Playing is a wonderful and essential way of decreasing stress. I always use long wand toys so I could keep a safe distance. Sit sideways to them because facing them head on can be seen as aggressive. In the beginning, I had to move the toy around for about 10 minutes before she even started to play with it. To keep her fully engaged, I would cycle through about eight different wand toys. I would use one toy for a couple minutes, and then once I detected that she was bored, I would immediately switch to another wand toy to keep her attention. I would still always bring her some sort of wet food to continue to pair myself with something positive, and then I would try and engage her with play. And then she started coming out more, even Hi. just to hiss at me. Hi, Mama. What's she doing, baby girl? Hi. Hi. Good girl. She was definitely starting to feel more comfortable, but still pretty frightened. <laughs> Step four is all about consent, which equals a cat feeling content. Consent means giving the cat control over their own body and also their environment. Number one, you don't force yourself on them. Number two, you don't force them to do anything. And number three, you give them choices. So throughout the numerous weeks that I was working with Truffle, I never approached her and I never uncovered her from her hiding place. I pretty much just sat down and stayed immobile. That showed her a level of predictability with my body. 
that allowed her to feel more comfortable approaching me because I was pretty much always in the same spot every time I worked with her. This allowed her to feel comfortable finally deciding to approach me. Did you notice her tail goes right up when she reaches me? That's a great body language signal. Tail up can mean confident, curious, or friendly. Some would have missed that signal in the moment because they were so focused on her hissing and most likely feeling a little nervous she was approaching them. And then she started coming out and eating in front of me. Step five is inviting equals exciting. And what I mean by that is I started inviting her to expand her world and what she was comfortable with. I never forced her. I rather made it really fun, exciting, yet calm to where she wanted to come and join me. She started coming out to play. Okay. And she was very clear when I pushed her too far. Get creative. She absolutely was telling me that I was way too close for her comfort level. So I modified these expandable claw back scratchers and used them to hand feed her. And then she started walking around the room more. Hi. And then she finally makes contact with me. Notice my response when she does it. There wasn't one. How you respond to behavior is super important. When she swats me, I just look away and stay silent. After a few moments, I let her know that she's okay. I saw this moment as Truffle testing the waters. She wants to be near me, but is still so nervous and unsure. Mama, what? You're okay. She started coming out when I walked in or if I called her. Where are you at? <laughs> and then she started coming out to play and eating right next to me and rolling over and showing me her belly Hi, Mama. and then came Sunny Sunny is a seven-year-old former community cat who has FIV they would stare at each other through the window and it seemed like they wanted to meet I didn't know what to expect when I opened that door would they like each other? She loved him. But I wasn't sure if the feeling was totally mutual. <laughs> you like him. About two days later, she rubbed up against me for the first time. Good girl. Good girl. And then I was able to touch her. Good girl. I felt so honored that she accepted me into her world. Here are just some minor details of what I did with Truffle. I started to recognize her positive triggers, which were sounds. These sounds would cue her to come out and engage with me. Some of those sounds were the bowl of food sliding on the floor, the sound of some of her toys hitting the floor, the sounds I would make with my mouth, and the voice I would use. By using the same voice, words, and sounds, she always knew it was me in the room. Anytime she was hiding, I never uncovered her or invaded her space. Every time I walked into that room, I had to rebuild the rapport with her. It was like yesterday never happened. I started to desensitize her to touch using her plush wand toys. I never once reacted negatively towards her. I never reprimanded her or responded to any of the times that she hissed at me or swatted and bit my legs or feet. I would never stare directly at her. If I was ever looking at her, I was constantly giving her slow blinks and looking away. Before I would walk into her room, I would just take a deep breath and go in. I remained calm, confident, and fearless. I had to remind myself sometimes that she was much more scared of me than I was of her.
And more than anything, I never, ever had expectations. I never walked into her room with an agenda or a goal. I literally would just allow her to lead me to where she wanted to go. Anything that I did with her is because she allowed me to. Once I introduced her to Sunny, she never swatted or bit me ever again. Petting Truffle was never the goal, but it sure was nice. My focus was just enabling her to feel safe and figuring out the best placement for her and her specific needs. Even though she made tremendous progress, she is still a nervous and frightened cat. She will need more time in a loving home to fully blossom, and I have no doubt she will. Thank you so much for watching. Truffle is truly wild at heart. It's one of the reasons why I love her so much. She fought for her freedom and she fought for her autonomy. This video is not about taming an aggressive cat. This video is about enabling a cat to feel safe, giving a cat control, and inviting them to trust us. So let's keep cats wild at heart. Let's give them choices and let's allow them to be who they are. Please like, subscribe, follow, and share.